Hi everybody, welcome back to Sunshine Soap and Candle Company. I've been getting lots of requests from you on how to make lotion. So I'm getting ready to restock for the holiday season, so I thought I would bring you along and share with you my process on how I make a basic lotion. And I will be sharing this recipe on my Patreon page. So if you care to purchase it, you can go ahead and take a look at it over there. Um, the reason I call it a basic lotion recipe is because there's a lot you can do with lotion. And there's actually a lot you can do just with this recipe in and of itself. So I'll be going through some of that as we're um, going through this video. I'll share with you some things you could do to spruce it up more if you like. But for now, I'm gonna be sharing with you my process on how I make a basic lotion, which is actually the one that I use um, on my website that I sell and the ones that I sell at shows. And it really is a nice, luxurious lotion, but um, there is a lot of other things you can do with lotion, and I'll try to give you some of that as we're going along. So all that being said, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is make sure you sterilize your um, whole entire environment uh, that you're gonna be working with. So that includes all of your surfaces, all of your utensils, spatulas, your immersion blender, um, the bowls and everything that you're gonna be using for lotion making, also your scale, everything. You're gonna wanna um, sterilize it in a 5% um, bleach water solution or you can just uh, wipe everything down really good with 99 or 91% rubbing alcohol and make sure everything gets sterilized. Lotion has a tendency um, to grow bacteria super quickly, so you wanna make sure you're making everything as sterile as possible. Um, you wanna make sure you're wearing gloves. After you wash your hands, you wanna make sure you put on gloves your hair needs to go back, and it's a good idea to wear long sleeves, especially if you're selling this lotion. These are just some basic good practices. So that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and show you um, what ingredients we're using tonight, and then we'll get right into the process. So we are gonna be using um, some uh, refined white shea butter. We're gonna be using some emulsifying or e-wax, and this is just to help thicken up your lotion, and it actually helps what it does is it combines the water and the oils together, and that's part of how you make lotion, by e-wax is an essential ingredient. Um, and then the next thing we're gonna be using is some stearic acid, and this lowers the pH of your lotion, it also adds a thickness and a little bit of a hardness to your lotion, so it's not so liquidy. We are gonna be using rice bran oil. I love rice bran oil in this recipe because it absorbs into the skin super easily, and it has um, lots of antioxidants and it's a good like vitamin E replacement. So um, rice bran oil is great, it's a great option. It's inexpensive and it's good for mature skin as well. So that's what we're gonna be using. Now I'm making a really big batch of lotion tonight. Um, and what I'll do when I share it to my Patreon page is I'll scale the recipe down to maybe like a one pound or a two pound recipe and I'll put in percentages, and so that way you can scale up or down as you see fit. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is my big um, bucket of distilled water here. So you wanna make sure you're not using any tap water because tap water can have organisms or heavy metals in it. So you wanna make sure you're using distilled water. So this is my big um, container of distilled water. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna heat this up. This container happens to fit in my microwave, so I'm gonna go in ahead and heat this up to, um, not to boiling, but we're gonna get it hot. So I'll take the temperature when it comes out to let you know exactly what that is. Okay, while that water is warming up, we're gonna go ahead and weigh out the shea butter and the rice bran oil. And I forgot to mention, I do use uh, sweet almond oil in this recipe as well for its emollient properties. And it's a really nice oil to add into lotion because it absorbs um, easily into the skin. It's a nice light carrier oil. Actually, I'm a little bit off on this shea butter, so I'm gonna get a little bit more here. Almost there. Um, okay. So there's my shea butter. I probably have a little bit too much in here, so let me just shave that down a little. There, perfect. So there's my shea butter, and then I'm going to be adding in my rice bran oil. I 
would not recommend this big of a batch um, if you've never made lotion before, but this is the batch size I'm making tonight, so I definitely will scale that recipe down for you when I share it on my Patreon page. So there is the sweet, I mean, not the sweet almond, there's the rice bran oil, and now I'm gonna be adding in the sweet almond oil. It looks like I'm gonna to need to go grab some more. I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and add in my emulsifying wax along with my stearic acid into this same container. So you just gotta make sure you tear out your scale. you can do to make this a little bit less basic is you can use the soft and silky um, emulsifying wax. This is just a normal emulsifying wax made for lotion, um, which I happen to really like the texture of this one. The soft and silky makes your lotion a little bit, um, I wouldn't say runny, but it's not as thick in consistency. Uh, it's got a very smooth consistency, the soft and silky. I use that in my body butters too, and I will use that in my lotions also. You can do a direct substitute, by the way, if you do take a look at this recipe. Um, you can just do a direct substitute on um, Soft and Silky if you'd prefer to use that one instead. Um, and so then I'm gonna add in my stearic acid. Another thing you could do to make this not so basic is there's all kinds of extracts and Powders, for instance, you can add aloe vera powder, you can add carrot powder, you can add marshmallow root powder, you can infuse your oils with herbs or flower petals um, before you make your lotion, you can do an infusion. So there's all kinds of ways to make this um, a special type lotion for any type of skin or um, Things that you think your, your clients would like, or you, if you're making it for yourself. You just There's just a lot of things you can do um, with this. Okay, so there's my stearic acid, my shea butter, and my e-wax. Okay, so there's my sweet almond oil, my rice bran oil, my shea butter, my stearic acid, and my emulsifying wax. Okay, I've taken my water out and I've taken the temperature on this and it's sitting right around 100 degrees. It's warm, it's not hot. You don't want it too hot, um, so this should be pretty good. And I'm gonna go ahead and pop this into the microwave and I'm gonna um, microwave it slowly so that I don't burn my shea butter on 30 second bursts until it's all the way melted down. Okay, here are my oils, waxes, butters, and stearic acid all completely melted down. Um, you do wanna make sure if you're using the method that I just showed you to go very slow. You do not want your shea butter to get too hot. If your shea butter gets too hot, your lotion's gonna turn very grainy. Um, that has happened to me once before early on in my lotion making. Um, one way to avoid that, if you wanted to, is you could melt down the stearic acid and the e-wax separately in another container because they have a higher melt point. You could melt all that down and then you can add your shea butter into it and stir it until it's all melted. That is definitely probably a safer way to do it, but I've been making lotion for a long time um, and this is just my process. I know some of you out there are gonna be thinking that's not the way that I do it. Um, but this is just my process, so um, 
and I feel safe and comfortable doing it this way. And I never get my oils and butters too hot when I go very slow. So they're all melted down and stirred. I'm gonna give you a temperature reference here for this. So I am only sitting at 125 degrees on this. Um, I wouldn't wanna go much higher than 150 degrees on um, your shea butter. It's gonna to get too hot and then you're gonna ruin the properties of the butter and it'll burn it and you cannot make a good quality lotion with burned shea butter. So I'm actually gonna be transferring my mixture into this bigger one because I forgot I have to add my waters into the oil mixture. And this container is obviously too small. So now I've dirtied up a container. So as you can see, my water is sitting right next to me. Compared to the water, this mixture looks very small. So the water is the biggest ingredient. And just for reference here, we're making 15 pounds of uh, lotion. Okay, I think I got that all scraped out. Had I been thinking, I would have just done everything in here first, but oh well. Okay, so then there's that. So the next thing you're gonna do is start to add in your water, which I'm gonna need two hands for this part. So this is actually where your lotion starts to become lotion. As soon as you start adding water to this mixture, you're gonna see that it starts to create lotion. I'm gonna go slowly because you're supposed to stir in the water and this water is warm now, sitting probably at right around 97 degrees. So we're just gonna start adding it slowly to the oil mixture here. And there you can see it's turning white. It's already turning into lotion. So I'm gonna stop there and I'm gonna give it a stir. And I'm gonna add more water. Gonna go ahead and stir it by hand. And then I'm gonna take my immersion blender and I'm gonna stir, I'm gonna blend it all together to create lotion. But as you can see, it is already starting to emulsify and thicken. So we just need to get the immersion blender in there and get it all blended up. So I'm gonna put my stick blender here on high. Okay, as you can see, it is starting to thicken up into a nice consistency here, and it is time to go ahead and add the preservative. Um, whenever you're adding oils and waters together, it is super, super important that you don't forget this step of adding in your preservative. If you don't add a preservative into this mixture, it is going to turn rancid very quickly, and it's gonna grow bacteria. So, you could, you could, if you were just using it for yourself, you could make a small batch and store it in the fridge, um, but I don't recommend that. I actually recommend adding a preservative because of the introduction of water. Um, it's just not a good idea. Um, but I know a lot of people have said, or I've heard a lot of people have said that they would prefer to just make a smaller batch and keep it in the fridge and then just um, use it up within a week or two. Okay, I am using Optifin as my preservative. I'm just gonna take a quick temperature read to make sure we're not too hot here. Okay, we're sitting right around 96 degrees. And this Optifin that I'm using here is um, good to add into your products if you're under 167 degrees which I'm well below that. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a hand stir, and then I'm gonna mix it in again with the, with the blender.
So other things you could add to your lotions. Uh, my mind has been brainstorming things. You could add to lotions. You could add glycerin. You could add jojoba oil. You could even add aloe vera gel or, or the powdered form. Or um, you could use aloe vera, like if it was just 100% aloe vera juice, you could use that as your liquid instead of water. So there's just a ton of things you can do. Okay, we're gonna blend it again. thickening up to a very nice consistency. This lotion is going to continue to set up as it cools. Okay. So this will continue to thicken up, but one reason I like to make a really big batch like this is because then you can save it in another container, um, an airtight container, and you can fragrance your stuff in different um, fragrances. So for instance, if I only wanted to make five containers a certain fragrance, then I'm gonna measure out what would be in five containers and I'll fragrance that, put it into my containers, and then I have all this extra that I can play around with and use different fragrances as opposed to adding in a fragrance into um, this entire batch, you can separate it out. So I like to save the unscented lotion um, in a container and then kind of just um, make as many containers as I would like in certain fragrances. So the first one I'm gonna be using, I'll show you the first one I'm gonna be um, fragrancing is the um, cinnamon hot cocoa that I made that winter soap with, the first winter soap. And I'm also gonna be scenting probably five lotions or so with the um, cinnamon hot cocoa fragrance for now, just to kind of see how people like it. So I will bring you right back when those containers are ready and I'll show you how I fragrance my lotion and put it into the containers. Okay, I went ahead and I portioned off two and a half pounds of the lotion from that big container and now I'm ready to go ahead and add in my fragrance oil and I've washed and cleaned out and sterilized the containers I'm gonna be using. So this is what it looks like right now. This will continue to set up even more um, as it cools. Right now we're sitting at 95 degrees. Um, as it cools overnight, it will get much thicker. Um, some of the lotions, and, and this is one of the reasons why I love making my own lotion. Some of the lotions and stuff you buy from the store, um, even some bigger chains that sell body lotions, they're very thin and watery. The lotion that I make here is got a very thick consistency and but it also absorbs into the skin nicely. So there's not a lot of greasy texture, um, but it does a great job moisturizing and you know exactly what's going into it. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in my cinnamon cocoa fragrance oil and this is not a lot of fragrance oil, but a little bit goes a long way. Make sure you are checking your usage rates on your fragrance oils um, because each fragrance oil, there's a general rule of thumb, you know, you can kind of follow, but each fragrance oil could potentially carry a different usage rate for lotions, um, soaps, and all that. You could add a certain amount to lotion in one fragrance, and then you go to another fragrance, and it's got a different usage rate. So you gotta be really careful adding in your fragrance oils that you don't base it off of what you've done with prior fragrances. This is a leave-on product. It's especially important that you're getting your usage rates correct. 
um, because if you have too much in there, you know, you could potentially not be making a very safe product. So just check the usage rates on your fragrance oils before you go adding it in. And um, Brambleberry has a really nice um, fragrance calculator. If you're using their fragrances, you can use their fragrance calculator for lotions and it'll give you exact amounts for uh, medium, light, or strong fragrance. And I always go for the strong fragrance when I use that calculator because I like a stronger smell. Um, one of the things, oh, this smells so good. One of the things um, when you're making lotions too is when your lotions, when you just pour the fragrance oil in, sometimes it's hard to detect the fragrance and you're tempted to add more. Don't do it. You'll over fragrance your lotion. Especially if you've used the fragrance calculator from Brambleberry, you're definitely gonna wanna stick to those guidelines. Um, I swear as it sets up and overnight, once you put it in the containers and you cap it and then you go back to it after it's completely set up, it usually has exactly the um, potency of fragrance that you would like. So at first, if you don't smell it very strong and you're following those guidelines, stick to it, wait overnight, come back to it and smell it, and 100% of the time, at least for me, it always comes out exactly the way I had wanted it to. So once you get this good and stirred in, you can take your stick blender back to it just to make sure it's um, very good and incorporated. See that nice consistency? Okay. So then you are ready to go ahead and put it into your containers. So I'll show you how I do that. It already smells fantastic. This is a great wintertime fragrance. It's not too like sugary sweet on the chocolate. That cinnamon adds a nice like depth, but it's not too spicy. It just smells really, um, really good. Okay, so these are the containers I like to use. These are um, eight ounce PET containers. Um, I probably got these from Nature's Garden. I'll leave a link below. And I just like, the reason, one of the reasons I like these wide containers is because you can scoop your lotions right in. I'm gonna try to show you here without making a big old mess. But yeah, you can scoop your lotions right in and you can weigh out an empty container tear it out and then add in your eight ounces this way. Now I'm not going to go into all of the labeling that goes into lotions, but generally speaking, um, you do need to add in the amount of lotion that's in your container. So if your container is an eight ounce container, but it actually can fit like nine ounces. You actually have to list that. So I'm weighing out my nine, my, sorry, I'm weighing out my eight ounces on these containers. And then I'm gonna set them aside. It's just gorgeous. Such a nice creamy texture. You also can add color to these um, lotions. You just need to use a pre-approved um, skin safe uh, lotion. You could add a little bit of mica to the oil phase Actually, when your oils are melted down, you could use a little bit of mica and color it. Um, but I personally, I just kind of like a white lotion. Occasionally I'll put color in my lotions um, if I'm really feeling like it needs that. And I'll usually just do it to a very light um, pastel, pastel color. So um, there we go. Usually I just do white. I just think white lotions look very clean and natural.
All right, there you have it, friends. That is how I make my beautiful um, moisturizing body lotion. And I'm gonna go ahead and do my other fragrances off camera, but I will bring you back tomorrow to show you um, exactly the consistency. As you can see, it is already pretty thick, looking very good. And I'll bring, back, bring you back to show you exactly what the consistency looks like. See you soon.